Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Champions Chess Tour. Um, I went to bed last night very excitedly thinking that I'm going to wake up to some tremendous chess entertainment. Unfortunately because of I live in Australia, I don't really get to watch most of these games live unless I stay up ridiculously late. So indeed um, it is for me a bit of a two days event just to follow one round. And uh, like I said I woke up this morning very excitedly to see what happened on the first day and boy oh boy entertainment was indeed delivered in spades, although at certain points not exactly the way I pictured it. Um, of course we cannot go past uh, our world champion Magnus Carlsen and uh, his uh, infamous game that he produced against uh, Jan Kuzhistov Duda, so let's have a look at that. Um, I am going to pretend that this did not happen, actually I'm not going to pretend that. Um, once uh, a fair while ago, I made a video about uh, a bonk cloud, a bonk cloud video between Hikaru and Magnus, in which I expressed uh, my opinion, which uh, triggered some very heated reactions. I am not going to back off from said reaction, or uh, sorry, rather said opinion, but um, I'm going to uh, just um, repeat myself, saying that I don't think it's worthy of a world champion to do anything like this. But uh, Magnus seems to be the world champion who is uh, breaking down certain barriers and taboos. And uh, whilst it does come with uh, mixed um, feedbacks from the chess world, it definitely does attract a lot of attention. And uh, a lot of people seem to like this kind of uh, shenanigans, um, which is bordering on the disrespectful or on the trolling. It depends on how you look at it. But hey, this is what it is. So let's have a look at what happened in this game. Um, Magnus did say after the game interview, interview, I caught as much, that he actually prepared a little bit for this 1F3, um, put an adjective here, or, or a uh, whatever you want. Um, so it's interesting that he wanted to make sure though that he was not losing by force. Um, kudos to him for that. And um, so he played this knight a4 line. And by the way, I went through this game a number of times, or at least the first 10, 15 moves. And it uh, never ceases to amaze me that the current top level players, of course Magnus um, included, um, can play in a style of the engine like no one ever before. Like if you look at the moves that are played for white from here on out, are virtually only moves all the way through. And it's very engine-like to, to embrace positions like this where you would be like, what on earth is white doing with pawn f3, the knight on a4? It, it has to be absolutely atrocious, and yet somehow it just doesn't quite lose. And it's amazing to see the ability and the skill of the likes of Magnus and Hikaru is, by the way, another example of this, of being able to play positions that, for a human eye at first sight, looks absolutely miserable, with remarkable accuracy and uh, tenacity. I would like to mention before we go on though, that the most important part for me of this opening was that he black actually had a choice to take e4. And it would have resulted in a uh, quite interesting fireworks, needless to say that fe immediately loses to queen h4 check. Uh, I will show you that variation. And uh, now after g3, queen e4, the whole entire house uh, is on prey. So this is just utterly unplayable. And uh, the only playable move for white here is queen e2. And then after um, queen h4 check g3, knight takes. And this is just an insane variation, by the way. Queen takes e5, bishop blocks on e7, and queen takes g3. And now even a4 is hanging in the end. Like, what a variation. And then after queen takes queen g7, queen h4 check, queen g3, and rook g8, black is actually much better. In the resulting endgame, uh, White will have serious trouble with uh, properly developing his pieces and the king is a little bit uh, awkwardly placed after the forced take-take sequence. However, here apparently King D1 is very, very close to equal, which is again an assessment that is extremely difficult to digest uh, because it looks like uh, White just lost castling rights and um, is behind in development. But somehow white holds, although admittedly um, the position is clearly um, slightly better for black, but nothing substantial to claim uh, a winning edge. 
unbelievable absolutely unbelievable stuff anyway um so the game continued with this very curious take stakes which turned into almost like a weird mix of a um central gambit i think it's called e4 e5 d4 so it it, it looked like uh or center gambit, I think it's called, with the, which is weird because it's not even a gambit. Um, with this and then knight c6 and then queen e3. Um, so it feels like it's a variation of that or a variation of a reverse Scandinavian, actually. A little bit, it uh, it has got those vibes as well. According to the engine, it's minus 1.2. But it's super interesting to see that actually did applied a lot of engine moves and then the, the advantage kept on dropping down, 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 down. Um, curious stuff to observe and here for example the the machine claims knight b6 to be best and then again a very irrational line occurs where here apparently the best move is h4 I mean <laughs> welcome to 21st century chess where everything that we knew about chess being wrong apparently is okay at least although eventually the engine changes its mind to retreat the knight to c3 and after d6 takes 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 black is uh, clearly ahead due to the very ugly f3 that prevents the knight from developing properly. Um, but yeah, knight b4 was instead played and now Magnus uh, managed to uh, hold it together without too many dramas. And now the position is dead even. As a matter of fact, I think Magnus pulls ahead very soon. Yes, white is already um, much better. Not much, but somewhat, somewhat better here after queen g6 castles queenside. And here the game took a very irrational turn where... Both sides just went absolute gank hole. Um, but most notably here, Magnus managed to rip uh, White's king's position open. But the two bishops seem to be dominating the board. And in fact here, bishop a6 is a mistake in turn. And the refutation, again, is a totally non-human move. Like, no one would seriously consider bishop takes c7 here. Cracking open the c-file onto one's king, it looks like... What are you doing, man? Like, you, you seem to have a death wish. And yet, after bishop takes c7, rook f c8, rook d6, um, poses major issues. Major issues to black, who is now dealing with a hanging queen, and the two knights are hanging on c6 after take, take, take. f6 seems to be best, when uh, rook d7 is actually, again, ridiculing the two knights. Uh, if there was a learning takeaway from this game, one of them would be that, remember this, that two knights guarding each other is almost always a very clumsy and unwanted situation because neither of them can move without leaving the other one unguarded. And after queen e8, uh, the boar constrictor star comes in with queen d6 and now it's quite amazing how many black pieces cannot actually move without material loss and white is up in this absolute positional domination an absolutely surreal line that there is no way i would ever find um in any over the board environment let alone in a short time control because bishop takes c7 just looks so irrational and yet is the best move then came a little bit of a, a mess in the middle game which i'm going to skip over mostly because i didn't find any educational uh, points there, mostly best moves by both sides, and then we arrived, except for this trade, at this very curious endgame with uh, the two miners against the two rocks, but black had this pawn triangle, I guess you are scoring some Eric Rosen points there on the Eric Rosen chart, um, so I was very excited to see if there was a winning chance for either side, and actually I did find an interesting point in this endgame right here, so here um, Duda played g5 naturally if you are black here you would be thinking that there are two things i need to do right now and that both of them need to be attended to quickly one of them is to start rolling the pawns up like mad and the other one is to bring the king towards the center in particular towards this pawn on c4 which is the main source of white's play now you can do it by playing g5 first and then g6 f5 and then king f7 king e6 yada 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 or you can play it by playing f5 first and then king f7, king e6 and then bring the king to the center. Now, as far as I'm concerned, f5 seems far more logical. The only reason why I imagine Duda may have uh, rejected this idea is because then comes h4, which blockades the two g pawns. But I think deeper 
inspection would prove this move to be incorrect. This is a, a no, actually no, the engine approves of this, and this would have probably led to a drawish game. But instead, he did have made a very curious mistake by playing g5, which is actually bordering the game losing. And I think the main idea behind this move was to bring the rook to the, on the sixth against the h2 pawn to create three passes. Which would be perfectly right, because you are looking to find play, counterplay in such endgames, for sure. However, after knight f5, which Magnus missed, by the way, all of a sudden black is in a pickle. And the reason for that is, is that we are threatening with the immediate knight e7, so g6 is denied. And after king h7 comes another awkward point after king d3, when there is no good next move for black, because the wanted king g6 doesn't work due to knight e7 check, there is no rook check available to move out of this motif, and rook h6 is also unavailable, so all of a sudden black doesn't have a useful move. And g6 just slaps the whole concept in the face, because now we're just shutting our own king and our rook as well, that wanted to go to h6, and after knight e4, the c pawn just waltzes in without any dramas whatsoever. In fact, in order to understand what a huge difference this minor detail makes, let's compare it to the game. In the game, Magnus started off with c4, and after rook h6, did he go king d3 and then knight f5 here? But now the problem is, in strong contrast, the king went to the correct direction, close to the pawn so that now it can monitor the c-pawn, and the rook had a chance, ah, oh, don't make it red, it was a beautiful move, the rook had a chance to swing across the sixth to hunt down h2. So this looks like a tiny, tiny difference, and yet it's a game changer. If he had played knight f5 first here, he would have cut both of these ideas off directly and immediately. The rook swing is not working, and the king can't come closer because of the immediate knight h7 threat. The engine reckons that the two best moves are king h7 followed by king d3 and then a5. But a5 is already like, really? That seems to be just um, not really working out. And indeed, the engine confirms after bishop d2, the pawn is going to start rolling and uh, white is winning. Or we could look into um, moving the rook somewhere. But then again, the rook doesn't really have a good square. Perhaps c7. When bishop d6 is a tempo, rook d7 and c4. And again... The pawn is marching and the black pawns are not doing anything. And we managed to preserve this guy. Note that g6 is not winning a piece here because of knight e7 check and then c5. And now rook takes e7 is actually losing to c6. Which is a marvelous tactical trick which allows white to claim more than likely a victory. Instead, however, the game continued with c4. And now Duda managed to drum up enough counterplay. Although even here the engine claims a win with the more accurate king c3. But I think this is a psychological shock to realize that you allowed that. And um, also with very low time for both players. I think a draw outcome made sense. After c6. Yeah it's quite funny how the engine attaches a question mark to this. And it, the evaluation remains the same. Um, yeah. Duda managed to catch up with the c6 pawn. Maggie managed to clean up the king side, um, and uh, it resulted eventually in an end game that uh, neither side can do much about other than accepting the fact that it was a draw. Now, I would have liked to cover more of the, the Duda Carson encounters because the other games uh, that were of decisive nature, by the way, that was the finish, were actually also quite interesting and were played. Um, in openings that are worthy of analyzing and exploring. But um, that will be maybe uh, go is going to happen in another video or a later one. However, there was something else that I found very, very cool and exciting to show you. Unfortunately, I will leave now the players up, but we are looking at a different game. That was uh, the legendary fighter Mamed Yarov against uh, Li Kuang Liem in a uh, Ragozin um defense they had a very curious middle game setup that i thought would be quite interesting to look at 95 queen b3 take take b6 rook e8 c6 i would have thought that c5 was okay but maybe bishop e5 is putting quite a bit of pressure on everything here so he just solidified the center first covered g7 and then played here something absolutely next level 
And that is why we all love to watch Mamed Yarov's games. Because instead of um, accepting, you know, a more or less equal position with not an awful lot going on, perhaps Rookie 6 keep on building the position, he went absolute burko with this exchange sack. Now the engine promptly attaches an ex uh, a question mark to this, but I love the move because I, I, I love uh, the concept. It's clear to understand what he wants to do. And I like how he pays zero care to material and goes in for the initiative. So the idea, of course, is to exploit the king stuck in the middle, cash in an extra pawn for the exchange and try to blow up the center to expose the king. Objectively inaccurate. But uh, I think this is a uh, very, very cool way to play chess. And kudos to Mamed Yarov for doing this. The game continued with knight e5, queen f4, knight c4 check. Note how aggressively he goes after the king. And here after takes, takes king e1, bishop d3. We have got a very curious case where this exchange sack turns into a positional sacrifice. Where black doesn't have any imminent threats whatsoever. However, the white king is permanently weak. And the connection of the rooks is going to become a very, very serious issue for white that is extremely difficult to overcome even in the long run. So that would have been fabulous. But of course, Le Quang just went, dropped back to e1. And now the engine claims uh, a white advantage. But uh, once again, I just uh, have to admire the courage and the spirit with which uh, Shakriar plays these, uh, these games is just next level. And here after... A few very interesting tidbits. Bishop takes pawn, takes rook d1, queen h4. Here came a magnificent finish that I really enjoyed. Queen d6 was played. And now the second rook uh, gets thrown in to the fire as if it was just a little bit of extra fuel. And this actually now leads to a forced repetition, a forced throw. Fe, queen e, king d2 is forced. King f1 loses to bishop h3, rook g2 check king here and then we check down at least the f2 pawn if not more and the king is still utterly exposed this is just unplayable and so le Quan was forced to go king e3 king e1 results in the same and there is your repetition so that is going to be our recap of uh, day one from uh, the champions chess tour um what a, what a way to kick off and we haven't even had a chance to look at some of the other amazing games and dramatic events such was um chess bras loss uh, eric hansen's loss against danish giri from a game where for the most part he actually had the upper hand and walked into a very unfortunate mate uh that was a heartbreaker i'm really rooting for eric uh, fellow streamer and a great dude so yeah there is a lot to look out for um, I'm very excited to see the further rounds and I'm going to cover at least a game every single day of the tournament so please uh, stay with me and watch the recap videos because hopefully almost guaranteed in fact there will be a lot of more exciting chess to be seen in the upcoming week on that note that is it for me from now please don't forget to like to sub to comment um, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video Bye.